Hey guys, so this is just a quick introduction video on how to use Fusion 360 to design a simple part that we're going to run on the GSK 928TD uh, CNC lathe. Uh, first things first, we open up Fusion 360 and by default we're in the design workspace. This is where we're going to design our part starting with a 2D sketch and then creating a 3D model from that. And then later on, we're going to use the manufacturer workspace here to do the uh, tool paths or the, the machine code. First thing we need to do is create a sketch. That's going to be a, a 2D representation of the part or the profile of the part. And because we're doing a lathe part, we're only going to sketch half the profile or the radius of the part. And then we will uh, use a tool to revolve that around a center line to create the 3D model. Um, you'll see up here we've got some tools for creating our 2D sketch, line, rectangle, circle, etc. And if we drop down this box here, we've got a few more tools here for creating that sketch. So we'll start with the line. And what we're going to do is start on the origin point here and just do a rough sketch of the part. So not worrying too much about the dimensions at this stage. We'll just sketch the profile. and finish that sketch by clicking on the, the closed point here at the origin. Press escape to finish off with the line tool and now we can add some dimensions to the part. So you can either do that with the toolbar up here, selecting the sketch dimension tool, or we can press D on the keyboard to select that same tool. Click on a line that we want to add a dimension to and drag that across here. Now we're only entering the radius at the moment. So that's going to be uh, 40 millimeters for the diameter, so you can do 40 divided by 2, and that'll calculate the radius automatically, or we can just say 20 millimeters and enter that in. Next, we can select two lines to create a dimension between those lines. And this one here is going to be 60 millimeters for the diameter, so 60 divided by 2. And for this other side, we want it to be the same as this first one that we've created. So what we can do is use the dimension tool to add this dimension and we can click this other dimension over here and it will automatically uh, grab that dimension. Anytime you change this one, it'll, it'll update the other side as well. So D1 for dimension one. Now you'll see that if we double click this and say uh, 15 millimeters, they both change together. Just adding the rest of the dimensions here. And we're done with the 2D model. So you might notice that all of these lines have now changed from blue, which means undefined, to black, which means that the sketch is fully defined so that nothing's going to go funny if we were to click and drag one of those lines or change another dimension it's all fully defined finish off the sketch and we select this the uh, shape that we've just created and up here on the toolbar we're going to use the revolve tool to create the 3d model so basically the profile that we've already selected then the axis that we want to revolve the part around the center line in this case and the other parameters are just saying, if you want it to be a partial revolve, you can choose an angle less than 360, but we want it to be a solid model, 360 degrees. It's going to create a new body and press OK. So there's our 3D model. Now we can add things like fillets and chamfers for rounding off the corners. Uh, we just select the fillet tool, select the edges that we want to round over. And I'll use the shift and the middle mouse button to rotate this part around so I can grab the other sides. And now we just specify in this box the radius of that uh, fillet, so three millimeters for this part. Our 3D model's done. Um, now's a good time to save your part. And just give it a name here. SK928TD example. Save that. And Fusion 360 automatically saves your parts to the cloud so you don't have to have them uh, stored locally on your machine anywhere. That way you can uh, open up Fusion 360 on any computer that you've got 
and just start working on the part where you left off. All right, so we're finished with the design workspace. Next thing we need to do is move over to the manufacturer workspace where we're going to uh, create the tool paths for the machine. And the first thing we do here is create a new setup. Basically a setup specifies what type of uh, machine we're running and the stock size, the work coordinate system and that sort of thing. Uh, for this, we're, we don't have a machine profile set up. You don't need to create that uh, for most things. So we just select that operation type here. We change that to turning or mill turn. Fusion 360's automatically worked out that the face of this part is the zero point and our, our Z axis is moving away and our X axis is moving across the part or the, the diameter of the part. That's correct. You don't need to worry about anything else on this page for now. We'll just move across to the stock tab and specify the, the raw material or the stock that we're going to use. Um, so generally you want that to be a little bit bigger than the part. Uh, we've got some material that's about 65 millimeters in diameter and it's about 100 millimeters long. So that creates our, you can see our 3D model in the center of the, the raw stock. But what we want to do is actually take that up so that the 3D model is at the front of the stock so that we're not having to, uh, to face off all of this extra material to get down to the part. So we change model position here from center to offset from front and that'll move the model across to the front of the, the stock. Basically, the, the stock that we've got is some pretty rough uh, cast material, cast aluminium, and it's got a lot of pits and voids on the front of the part. So we just want to add a bit of an offset so that there's some extra material there to remove so that the, uh, the face of the part really cleans up nicely. We're going to use three millimeters, and you'll see that that just adds a little bit of extra stock on the front that we can take away with the facing operation. We're finished here with the setup just click back to the front view so we can see what's happened. We've got our three millimeters of offset on the front. We've got some excess stock on around the diameter of the part. And back here, we've got some stock that's gripped in the chuck jaws. So the next thing we do is uh, start creating our tool paths. First thing you generally do with a, a lathe is your facing operation. Then you move through your, your rough profile, your finishing profile, and any uh, grooving or threading cycles that you might need to do. So we'll choose the turning face operation here, select our tool from the tool library. Now these are predefined tools that I've already set up. Now's a good time to mention that through any of these dialogues, really we, we should be working from the top to the bottom and left to the right across these tabs. So basically we start here with selecting the tool. The next thing we look at is the coolant and we want to use flood coolant for this because it's uh, aluminium. Down here we set our spindle speed. We're going to use a thousand RPM. Feed per, per revolution is correct. 0 0.1 millimeters per revolution is a, a pretty sensible feed rate for cutting aluminium with this particular tool. So now we look at the next tab across, the geometry tab. And this front mode, model front here, basically just specifies that uh, we want to face off the part right up to the front of the model here, our 3D model. On the radii tab, we've got some values here for clearance and retract and the outer radius and inner radius. You don't need to touch those for the facing operation, really. Uh, they'll make a bit more sense later on. Next up is the passes tab. We don't need to touch anything here. This linking tab here, we don't need to do anything for the facing operation either. Okay, our toolpath's done for the facing. Now, you can select the simulate tool at the top here. And that'll basically show us a simulation of what's going to happen on the machine. It's a good idea to turn on or to change this toolpath mode from all toolpath to just toolpath for operation uh, to avoid sort of cluttering the, the view with all of your other toolpaths. Later on, this is much more useful. At the moment, we've only got one uh, facing operation done, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, now we turn on stock and that'll show the stock being cut away as the simulation progresses. And I like to make this transparent so that you can see the model inside. So down here, we've got our speed for the simulation. It's a good idea to, to start that at a bit of a slower speed so that you don't miss anything and start the simulation. You can grab this slider and just pull it across to speed it up. So that was actually good that we ran the simulation because I've just noticed that our toolpath is trying to take that three millimeters of 
excess stock on the front of the part in one pass, which is not what we want. So back over here to the facing operation, we'll double click that, or you can right click and edit. Now, if we come across here to the passes tab, what I missed before was the multiple passes tick box. So you check that and uh, now you can specify the distance that you want to step over. So one millimeter is a good uh, step over for us and we want to tick the finishing passes, change that down to about 0 0.25, 0 0.3 millimeters for the finishing pass. And we can turn that feed rate down to 0 0.05 millimeters per revolution just so you get a nice slow finishing pass with a very fine step over so there's not much tool loading and we should get a good finish on the front of the part. Alright okay and now we can run the simulation again just to uh, to see that that's done what we expect. That's looking much better. Next up we need to do our rough profile turning. Fusion 360's automatically pre-selected that last tool that we used. Uh, we want flood coolant, correct, 1000 RPM and 0.1 millimeters per rev. Across to the geometry tab, now we've got a few more options here. We've got front and back and basically if you wanted to constrain the, uh, the tool path to only cut from the front of the part to this back shoulder here, uh, which is what we want to do in this case, we'll change this from model back to selection and that just lets us select a, a point or a, a line or a face for uh, that reference point. So if we select this back line here, uh, now that that toolpath is constrained it'll only uh, work in between these two lines here so you won't end up cutting anything past the back line here. What we actually want to do for this part is add a little bit of an offset so that it turns a little bit past the back of that so that uh, we get a nice smooth exit off the part. Uh, we're going to add negative two millimeters here. And you'll see that that reference line just moves across a bit. Across to the radii tab, these uh, clearance values are pretty sane for now. Later on, if you want to really optimize the, the uh, cycle time, you can change these offsets down to like one millimeter or 0.2 just to speed up the process so that it won't uh, use the slow feed rate to back the tool off the part for such a, a long distance before it changes to a rapid motion. Because we're working with some pretty rough cast material, I'm actually gonna leave that at 10 millimeters for now, just so there's no way that the tool can uh, wrap it into any excess stock. Across to the passes tab here, we want to change our uh, maximum depth Depth of cut, one millimeter, that's okay. We're gonna change it to two millimeters, just so it doesn't take too long. And we leave this stock to leave checkbox ticked. And what that's going to do is leave, in this case, 0.2 millimeters in both the X and the Z axes on the part so that uh, we can clean those up with a finishing pass. And across to the linking tab, this all looks good. So nothing we need to change there. Our roughing profile is finished and you can see the toolpath lines here. So it's always a good idea to do a quick simulation after you've created an operation just so you can make sure that everything makes sense. Now if you want to step through the simulation a little bit quicker you can actually hold your mouse down and drag it to the right to go forwards through the simulation or click it down and drag it to the left if you want to go backwards through the simulation. So now what we've noticed through running the simulation is that the tool is actually trying to uh, undercut the part back here. And what we actually want it to do is just maintain this uh, out of diameter here. So what we need to do is go back into that roughing profile tool path across to the passes tab and change this grooving parameter from allow radial grooving to don't allow grooving. And that's going to stop it from trying to, to come in and cut behind the part here. Now we want to create our finishing profile pass. Uh, we're using the same tool, we're using flood coolant, 1000 RPM, and these are some sensible feed rates. We need to select the uh, same selection for the back reference of the part as we did before. And our offset was two millimeters, so minus two millimeters. 
our clearance and outer radius radii are uh, correct. On the passes tab here, we just want one finishing pass. We want the step over to be anything more than uh, our stock to leave parameters before, which we had at uh, 0.25 millimeters. So one millimeter is, is fine here for the, the default. And just make sure there's no stock to leave ticked here. And over here on the linking tab, we need to change this lead out from being same as lead in to being uh, zero degrees. And that's just a little silly thing that Fusion 360 does as part of one of the last updates. It'll cause the tool to try and lead out of the part at 45 degrees by default, which will crash into the remaining stock that we haven't turned away. Actually, we need to change that grooving parameter to don't allow grooving, the same as the roughing toolpath. All right, we're done. So another quick simulation just to confirm. Now we can we can use this timeline down the bottom here to sort of skip across to the last finishing operation and just confirm that that's sensible. Looks good. Now that's basically it for this part. If, if you were doing uh, something different, now you could add in your, your grooves or your threads and then probably finish up with a, a parting cycle to cut the part off. But uh, for this part that we're doing, all we need to do is turn that outside profile and then later on for the second operation, we'll uh, flip that part over in the chuck and hold it by this uh, section here and turn the other side down. All right, so to get Fusion 360 to create some uh, G-code that we can run on the machine, we need to start with an NC program. And uh, the first thing we need to do here is select the post processor that we're going to use. I've got that stored in the post processors folder. Select that folder. And we use the GSK928TD turning post. These parameters here change depending on what post processor you select here. Now these are some options that uh, are specific to that post. The only thing you might need to look at is the max spindle speed here. Uh, if you're using constant surface speed with some small diameter parts and you don't want the spindle to try and ramp up to its maximum speed, so you can set a limit here. A thousand RPM is a good default at the moment. We need to select the output folder for where we're going to store the files. Now I've got that on a USB stick and the GSK928TD control is a bit funny in the way you need to be very specific with where the files are stored and what they're called. Um, so they need to be in a file, in a folder, sorry, called C001 Pro on the USB stick. And the name number here needs to be only three digits, 088 in this case. And you can use anything between 001 and 253, I believe. Over to the operations tab, we select setup one and that'll select all of the uh, operations that we've just created. Okay. And if we click the NC program five here and press post process, we'll see down here the following NC code successfully posted. So that's now stored 088.txt on our USB stick. What we actually need to do is go across to that USB stick and find that file that we've just created. And we re need to rename it to cnc088.txt. If it's anything other than cnc and then three digits dot text, the control won't recognize it as a part program. Safely eject our USB stick and our part is done. So now we can take the USB stick over to the CNC lathe and uh, plug it in and run our part. I hope this helps. I hope you've learned something and uh, thank you for watching.